your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love. Oh God, people take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on your abundance of your house. You give them drink from the river of, of delights. For you, for with you is a fountain of life. In your life, we see light. And Father, we just thank you, Lord, that you are our way, Lord God. That you are making a way, Lord God. That, Father, everything we need comes from you, Lord God. And tonight we magnify your name, Lord God, because you are moving, Lord God. I thank you for what you're doing, Lord God. I thank you even tonight for those breakthroughs, Lord God. I thank you, Lord, that your kingdom come, your will is being done here on earth as it is in heaven. Now, Father, we just magnify your name tonight, Lord God. We thank you for who you are, Lord God, for who you are to us, Lord God. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord, for what you're doing, Lord God. We magnify your name, Lord God. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Father. We magnify your name, Lord God. You're so good, Lord. No one can compare to you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We magnify your name, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We magnify your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness and your love, Lord God. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We praise you tonight, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you're making ways where there seems to be no way, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that you're breaking through, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. May we see it. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Annabella and Lindsay. Yes. Now I just want to ask um, to get your attention to the screen here for the announcements. us online. We would like to welcome our first time guests. We're so happy you're here. Please fill out a connect card. Raise your hand if you need one and one of our greeters will be happy to hand you one. Or scan our QR code on the screen to fill it out from your smartphone. Don't forget to download the Church Center app to keep up to date with upcoming events, giving, and being a part of small groups. Join us for our pre-service prayer before every service from 6 to 6.30 p.m. in our sanctuary. We encourage everyone to join our early morning prayer. From 5.30 to 6 a.m., we have a time of soaking. From 6 to 6.30 a.m., we pray on behalf of our city, church, and family. To participate, join the early morning prayer small group on the Church Center app to get the Zoom link. Let's agree together in prayer. Are you interested in serving by volunteering? We need your help with media, ushering, greeting, and kids ministry. Sign up sheet is in the back or see Veronica Acosta. Sundays, 5 to 6.30 p.m., we have our women's, men's, and kids ministries. Women's ministry, Hearts on Fire with Ana Chavez. Men's ministry, Kingdom Men with Robert Acosta Sr. And our kids ministry, Cadet Edition with Catalina Campos. Come grow with us. We have a young women's group, Girl Time, ages 16 to 35. 
for a time to hang out, fellowship, and study the women in the Bible. Once a month, see Emily Picochale for more details. Mark your calendars. We will be having a guest speaker, Pastor Aaron Anderson, on Thursday and Friday, May 18th through 19th at 7 p.m. Make sure to be here and invite others. Thursday and Friday, June 1st and 2nd at 7 p.m., Bishop Robert Hooks will be with us. You won't want to miss. We're excited to announce our next prophetic conference, Thursday, September 7th through Saturday, September 9th. Be sure to mark your calendars. More information to come. Can you sing? Can you play an instrument? Would you like to try out for our worship team? If so, see Nancy Alcosta for more information. Do you have a desire to learn and worship God with a tambourine? Would you like to join our Unity Tambourine Group? Speak with Gloria Camirano for more information. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you glad you're in God's house? Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I wonder, I think we have some visitors here tonight. Is that, it's a, Ophelia. I said your name right. Ophelia brought some friends with her tonight. Is there anyway? Praise God. <laughs> friends, of, friends of family. Friends and family, okay. Is that okay? Do you mind we can give you a, um, a welcome card so you can fill it up real quickly so we can get your name? Oh, they're, they're doing it so that way we can announce it, your name, because we love, um, I, I shared a few weeks ago, we wanted to um, give away, we wanted to adopt a tradition here that we wanted to give away a gifts first time uh, that came to church because our desire is to see people get to hear God's word. Amen? Because his word says that man can live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen? Amen. So whenever, did you guys give him the card to fill it up? And whenever you guys done that, give it to me. So, but at this time, I wanted to share about the offering. Let me get the, the scripture out quickly. Okay, it's found in the book of um, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse four. This is a very familiar scripture. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 4. It says, He who observes the wind will not sow. He who records the clouds will not reap. Okay, I'm going to read it again. He who observes the wind will not sow. He who records the clouds will not reap. We already understand, I, I read this scripture here many times, we already understand that God wanted us to obey his word when it comes to giving our tithes and offering. But many times we watch, as I think I shared here, uh, one time that um, I was in Maui and the speaker that night, so after he spoke, he said, I felt like I have to take offering to cover the expenses in the conference. And he said, I felt like there are some people here need to give a thousand dollars. Immediately in my mind, no way. There is no way I can give a thousand dollars. Because in my mind, I was saying, I save every time. That's when we first started the church. I save every time to help out when we started the church here. But guess what? When I made the reason why I, did, I said no in my mind, because I was watching my wind. <laughs> because in my, I was thinking, well, next week I have to pay the hotel. We used to meet in a, at the double tree. And I was thinking, there is no way I'm going to give him this offering. I have to give. I have to save every dime that I have to pay the hotel bill next week. But then, all of a sudden, he was way far to my right. All of a sudden, he walked up to where I was sitting. And he said, hey, 
There were a few people raised their hand to give a thousand dollars. He walked up to me and he said, hey, I haven't seen you raise your hand. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> In my mind, he's 79 years old. 89. I mean, 89 years old. I was thinking, I think he's losing it. <laughs> Why is he asking me? Why is he coming up to me and saying, you haven't raised your hand? And then I was here, I, so I was just looking at him, and then he said, are you going to give a thousand dollars? I said, I thought it's a volunteer. <laughs> Nobody's going to push me to give, okay? It's volunteer. <laughs> when I teach about giving, pay your tie and offering, listen, I'm not pushing you to do it. <laughs> I'm just sharing what the scripture said. It's up to you if you're going to give or not, okay? We are not pushing people to give. But he asked me, are you going to give a $1,000? And I said, oh my gosh. Why is he doing that to me? And all of a sudden, the Lord reminded me this scripture. Because the reason I already made up my mind, I am not giving a $1,000. I have to pay my hotel bill next, next week. And the Lord reminded me this scripture and he said, Meliana, you have been observing your bill. You have been watching your hotel bill. Yes, and because you've been watching your hotel bill, you justify yourself that you're not going to give. Makes sense, right? Because I'm paying, helping, uh, paying the bill for the church, not my own personal, not my mortgage. Not my doctor's bill. It's for the church. You see how easily I can justify myself? Lord, it's not myself. It's for the church. And he said, you have been watching your wind. And he says, he who observed the wind will not sow. And he said, the reason why you're not going to sow, because you watch your, you've been watching your hotel bill. And he said, if you're not going to sow, you're not going to reap a harvest. Like the next sentence, he said, and he who, regard, he who regards the clouds will not reap. And he said, okay, it's up to you. You can make a decision not to sow. And if you're not going to sow, you're not going to reap a harvest. And right when I understood his word, Immediately in my mind, I was saying, man, I've been watching my hotel bill and I justify myself not to sell. And because I'm not going to sell, that means I'm not going to read. So guess what I did? I made up my mind. Oh, and he said, yes, I'm fine because I was so embarrassed. He was asking me over 2,000 people in the building. And I was thinking in my mind, why can't he go in the back and ask a businesswoman or businessman why is he asking me? I'm one of the speaker. Here's another excuse. Speaker don't always give, okay? <laughs> but no, that's the wrong reason. And then, when I said, okay, I'll give a thousand dollars. The reason why I said, yes, I'll give a thousand dollars, to make myself look good in front of all these people. But inside my heart, in my mind, no, I don't want to give a thousand dollars. I only said, yes, I'll give a thousand dollars to look good. And then he looked at me again and he said, no, you are not giving a thousand dollars. You give two thousand dollars. That's when I thought he was losing it. And I said, he is 89, 89 years old. I think he forgot that I am one of the speakers. And I think he, sh he should not ask me that. So. After he said that, then he turned around and left. And I sat there, stuck in my mind. I could not believe he did that to me. Upset at the same time. But then the Lord reminded me this scripture. And once I understood what he said, he who watches the wind will not sow. He who watches the clouds will not reap. Once I understood that, I grabbed my purse, grabbed my wallet, wrote $2,000, drop it in offering, there goes my hotel bill. And you would not know it. Three days later, somebody went and deposited $13,000 in my account. 
Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me tell you what. You can outgive God. Amen? So, right after that, we, uh, John and I, after that conference, John and I left, we flew and uh, spoke at this church. Come on, take excited we are right now tonight. And right after that, the, uh, when we spoke, the secretary came and handed me the offering. He had no idea what our needs are. And we left. I opened up the offering. It was a check for $20,000. Let me tell you what. God surprises me many times. That is just two testimony that I shared with you. But what I am trying to say, God showed me, Melana, you can outgive me. If you did not so, you are not real. And I just want to share those stories to encourage you guys. Because many times, I'm just like you. I'm not going to give. Because I have bills to pay. I have all these things to do. I have to fly out. I have to do, he has to go to, where are you going, honey? South Africa. <laughs> Costing me thousands of dollars. But guess what? I and continue to sow. And I had never seen God forsake us. As his word says, that the children of your servant will never beg for bread. That means all of us. Amen? Praise God. Okay, if you want to give, there is a get give online on the web, on the website or a text to give right there. Or if you uh, or you can um, go on our um, app there is so, oh, when you go on a church center app, there is so many uh, churches using it. Make sure you click Citadel. Amen? Or if you want to give a check, write a check or uh, cash, Robert going to pass you uh, guys' uh, envelope because we wanted to give the tax credit at the end of the year. Amen? So I'm going to pray for you. Father, I want to say thank you for your word that you reminded us here tonight that he or she who watches the wind will never sow. And he who watches the cloud will never win. Father, help us, oh God. Beside watching our bill, you already commanded us. You already spoke to us through your word when it comes to giving our tithes and offering. So there can be bread in your house. And I thank you, Jesus. That means when we come to your house, we will receive the right word that will feed us, the word that we will need for that season, the word that we will need for our situation. As your word says that man can't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of your mouth. And I want to say thank you, Lord. We love you, we bless you, and we worship you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Okay, go ahead and uh, give. I'm going to give you guys a few uh, moments. Now, do we got the card? I wanted to get it. So I, I wanted to, uh, do we got the cards? Um, well, that means it's a load of <laughs> blessing. <laughs> that means it's a load of blessing. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Did we get it? Okay, she's almost done. Okay. Mauricio, I'm so glad you made it tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We pray for him. He was uh, running uh, late last week, not able to come, but it's so Good to see you all again here tonight. Amen? You know what? Let me just give this away so we can do the Mother's Day gift so we can move on. Um, okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate you guys again for being here. I wanted to find out... Um, Okay. Oh, thank you so much for filling this up real quickly. What we wanted to give, um, wanted to give away a gift card. 
This is not, this is a stop a gift card. We wanted to give away. Because again, like what I said earlier, we wanted, we just want to use this to invite people when they come, not for anything else. But so we can be here, so we can hear the teaching of God's word. As his word says that man can live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Amen. I always made a joke. I want to give away the, the, um, the stop a, a gift card because I want you guys to invite me to go have a cup of coffee with you guys. Amen. <laughs> I'm just joking. Okay. We have three visitors here tonight. And guess what else we're going to do at the end of the month? Whoever brings the, the most uh, a guest, we have a gift basket for you at the end of the month. We have that prepared. Amen? So I want to give away this um, stop a, a, a cough, stop a gift card for Sonia Maya. Did I say it right? Moya. Sonia Moya. Okay, uh, here we're going to give this to her. Give her a hand. God bless you, Sonia. And the next one is Anna. Anna, do you mind pronouncing your last name? For Harkis. For Okay. Okay. You have to forgive me. See, my name is Meliana. I have my a lot of people pronounce my name Marmalade. So <laughs> or Melody or Melania. But it's Meliana in Hawaiian. So let's, I'm going to give another card to Anna. Let's give Anna a big hand clap. Praise God. And the last one is Olivia. Another Olivia? Did I get it? Did I get another Olivia? Huh? Did I got it? Did I say it right? Okay, so okay, here is the here is for Olivia. Praise God. Thank let, can you all get up, please? Let's all get up and go greet them. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome. We just want to say we so appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you for being here. We love you, all three ladies. Thank you for being here. We just want to put we just want to say hello. Thank you for being here. Love on you. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Olivia, Anna, and Sonia. Praise God. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We love you all. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. All right. Now we're going to move on. We are going to give a gift. To the youngest mother and the oldest mother. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm gonna give. Them. Okay, we're gonna give a gift for um, the youngest mother first. Who is here between 25 and 30? Nimsy. Only one. Okay. There, Nimsy wanted. Okay, she have a, a little money gift and a bouquet of flour and a bag of chocolate. Oh, hey! Yeah. That's awesome. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I feel like I'm the oldest mom here. Well, hopefully then. Hopefully, okay, let's say I'm 64 years old. Anybody older than that? Oh, no, I think somebody maybe. Oh, my God. I can't believe you beat me. <laughs> Is older than 65? Okay. Anybody else older than 65? Where's Gloria? <laughs> okay. So, and so that's it? Nobody's older than 65? Six, how old are you? Am I supposed She's to say that? <laughs> okay. 
63. Huh? 63? Okay. Okay. She's 63 and 64. 65 and a half. 65 and a half. Let's give Terry a hand. Praise God. All right. And okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I want that all the mother, if you please, all the mother come up here. We're going to pray for you all and give you a gift. Okay, every mom, please get up uh, real quickly. Up here, we're going to pray for you and give you a gift. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Come on, mom. Come on, mom. Don't be shy. Come on up to the front. We're all going to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, move close, move close, move close behind me. Oh, make a long line behind me. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, God. Look at all these moms. Praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. Oh, move, up, move closer. Make a long line behind me. Thank you, Jesus. There is one word I want to give to all the mom. okay, before they give you guys uh, the, the roses. I just want to say thank you for being, raising up children. I know it's hard sometimes. But I just want to say, continue to pray for, if some of our children is not walking with the Lord, please continue to pray for them. Because his word says that the children of his servant shall serve the Lord. Amen? Yeah. That is a promise for you and I. Yes. Also, there is a word, there is one advice I want to give you all tonight. It's the word that Mary, the mother of Jesus, gave to the servant. When they ran out of wine, do you all remember that story? When they ran out of wine, Mary turned to the servant and she said, just do whatever he said. Yeah. My prayer is that we will obey and we will do everything that Jesus said. Because when we do that, then all our lives will be blessed. No matter whatever crisis or situation you are facing, when we do what God said, we will all be blessed. And we will bring change to our family. We will bring change to our city. We will bring change to everyone that we come in contact with. There is a scripture said in a book, I believe in the book of uh, Psalm 68, verse 11. John, do you mind looking up real quickly? Yeah. I'll read that scripture. I'll put that scripture real quickly. It says that the women, God called the women and made them a strong. And guess what? And they will fall out as a great host. Let me tell you what. God called all of us to be powerful and to bring change to our society. Bring change to our family. Let me tell you what. Look who went out to the went to the tomb and find out found out that Jesus resurrected. It was a woman. Right? It was a woman. Guess what Mary did? She carried a savior. I believe God called all of us to carry who he is. Amen. That means we will carry his peace, his joy, and his love wherever we are at. Amen. Amen. Don't think, oh no, if I, I'm not sure if that's me. Come on. I did not say that. God said that about all of us here tonight. Amen. Amen. Did you find that scripture, honey? What so? Psalm 68, verse 11. 68. Yeah, 68, verse 11. We could, we, let me I'll read it and I'll pray. Right, Psalm 68, verse 11 in Living Bible. Living? Yes. Oh, Did you find it? I don't have it. <laughs> let me pray. Then you'll find it and I'll read it and we can pass the gift. Father, I want to say thank you for these amazing women, oh God. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, you brought them here tonight because you want to remind them, oh God, that they are powerful, oh God, that it was through them, oh God, that they will bring change to their family, to their city, 
and do everywhere that they go and they will be an influencing of your goodness and your mercy. Father, I pray, oh God, that you help all of us here tonight that we will do what Mary had advised, oh God. Just do whatever you said. Yes. Lord, I pray here, all of us here tonight, that we will obey your word, oh God, in every area of our lives. Father, we can quote all the promises, oh God, but if we don't do what you said, there is no way we can see your promises being fulfilled in our lives. But I pray that tonight, you empower your daughters here tonight, oh God, to obey your word, oh God, so we can see the fulfillment of your promises. We will not be able to go, continue to walk in crisis, in problem every day, but we will walk in your promises being fulfilled in our lives. Father, I pray, oh God, that you bless every mother here tonight. You prosper them. Some of you, some here tonight, oh God, they have loved ones that may be not walking with you. But I pray, oh God, as they trust you, obey your word, you will see, your, they will see your promises being fulfilled in their lives. I pray, oh God, that you bless them, you prosper them, keep them healthy in every area of their lives. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. John, did you find it? Okay, you did not find it. I'll read it another time. Anyway, thank you. Come on, kids. Come on. Give give the gifts to mom. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I think praise you. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Wonderful, wonderful. One more, one more. Yes. Awesome. All right. Let's give all the mom a big hand. Oh, oh, let's take a picture. Yes. Yes. Can we all can we all scoot together so so she can be able to take a better picture of us? Yeah. 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 Oh, come on, Linda. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. Yes, you do. Jesus. Jesus. One, two, three, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you. Yes. Praise God. Now I go for you. Y'all ready for the word? <laughs> Let's give the ladies a clap offering. Come on. Thank you. Can we thank Veronica for putting all that together, getting that rose? Come on, let's thank her as well. Let's hear praise Jesus. Praise God. Well, I was, I was so glad that I came home last night. Um, I actually came a day early. So I could spend my day at home. Yay. It was great. And uh, also prepare what what I need to share tonight with every one of you. I am going to talk about mothers today. Yeah. Now, as soon as I woke up in the morning, Miliana said, Are you, it's Mother's Day. I need to share something about mothers. And I, I was planning on doing that. <coughs> Excuse me, but I want to share with you something that God laid on my heart. It's found in Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. I, I'm going to, this is probably not the most traditional verse to begin 
a discussion on mothers, but it's what the Lord laid on my heart. In verse, in chapter 10 of Isaiah, verse 27, I'm sure over the years you've probably heard this quoted. Probably heard men of God and women of God quoted throughout your time with the Lord. But I'm going to preach it much differently than you've heard. It says this word, these words, it shall come to pass. Everybody say it shall come to pass. Aren't you thankful that God's got our future in our hands? Come on. You know, I, I, I thought about this because, Meliana, let me just tell you, none of us in this room would be here unless there was a mother. Right. Right. I can speak the word, but somebody has to give birth to that word. Right. Somebody has to bring that word out. Somebody has to put, somebody has to carry that word. And the prophet is, it is Isaiah is basically saying, you know what? This is going to happen in the in the future, you know. And this, I couldn't get this more, three words out of my mind all day. He said, "In that day." Ever say, "In that day." Yeah. I don't know about you, but I'm waiting for that day. Oh, come on. I'm waiting for that day. I'm waiting for that day that everything that God said He would do is going to come to pass in my life. Yeah. And so then it says these words, and this is what I love that. His birth will be taken away from your shoulder. You know what I've noticed about moms? Moms carry burdens. For the sons and for the daughters. Especially when the son and daughter whom they carried for nine months raised doesn't become what they believe God wanted them to become. When a son is on drugs or a daughter has gone through horrific relationship, how many know that's a burden? And mothers carry burdens and it never leaves them. It seems like dads and the way they can kind of they can kind of check out a little bit, but mother, that burden on a mom never leaves her. I can tell you this. Being married to Meliana, who is the mother of my two children, I can tell you this. We can have problems with the church. We can have financial problems. We can have, we can have even a problem between us. But when there's a problem with our children, it's another weight of burden on her shoulders. Yep. And basically what Isaiah is basically communicating to to, to Israel is this. There, there's going to come a day when, when the burdens that you've been carrying, the burdens that have weighed you down your entire life, if there's, going to, it's going, there's going to be a day of breakthrough. There's going to be a day when that yoke is broken. It says, listen, this, that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder. Let me just tell you, ladies and gentlemen, there comes a day of freedom. There comes the day of deliverance. This is a promise from God that we need to pray over our children, over our situation, over our nation, over the city of Tucson, and over our circumstances. That the things that we are carrying one day will be lifted off. It will be lifted off. Then he says, and his yoke from your neck. Everybody say yoke. How many have ever been strapped? I mean, you felt like you were strapped to something. <laughs> and it says, I'll break that too. I'll break that off of you. And this is what, this is how to say this. And the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. You know what I pray this church becomes? Yeah. A yoke? Breaking ministry. Come on. A sh that people who come in with burdens, those burdens leave them and they walk in here one way and walk out of here another way. Yeah. Because the, the weight of life that gets us down, all of a sudden, I get in the presence of God, I get in the and under the word of God, and all of a sudden, that weight is lifted off of me. Come on. 
That's why I so appreciate Nimsy and little Bella singing with all their heart. When they say, I speak the name of Jesus, I can feel the yoke being broken off of people. I believe that there's a yoke breaking anointing in this house tonight. There's a yoke breaking anointing on your life. Because I think about this. There's a lot of mothers in the Bible that broke yokes. There's a lot of anointed men and women of God throughout history, women of God, that, that because of the anointed broke, broke, took the weight off of people's shoulders. And when I think about this, there's one thing that I know. There's a story about a certain woman. It's actually found in 2 Kings chapter 4. And I'm going to read out of the new American Standard Version tonight. And it says in 2 Kings chapter 4, verse 1 through 7, a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets cried out to Elijah. Listen to her burden. Listen to the yoke that she is carrying. Because see, I can tell you something right now. I can check out sometimes. But I know sometimes mothers, they never check out. It never leaves them. But this woman is a little bit different situation. She says, your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. And the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. Now, ladies and gentlemen, when I read that, I realized that's a burden. That's a yoke. And it needs to be broken. Come on. Because she doesn't want to lose her children. She's already lost her husband. The problem is that she doesn't have the money to pay the creditor. If she did, she would have gave the money to the creditor and, and paid the debt to keep her children. So because of the laws of that day, basically, if you don't have the money, I take your children to pay off the debt. Come on. How many know that she's in trouble? She's in trouble. And I, I can tell you something. Can you imagine being that mother to assume with the fact that now her husband's dead, so there's no income coming in. Right. Obviously, that uh, I realized that he was a servant or a servant of Elijah, but apparently, I guess he didn't leave a life insurance policy. At least when I die, Meliana has a life insurance policy. Come on. And, and, and so, at least, at least she has some property, or at least we have some retirement. That this guy had nothing to pass on if he went on. He left her in debt. Now, there's something God spoke to me today that I never saw ever before. Because you know what I've noticed about mothers? They take very seriously their obligations. Men have a tendency to check out of their obligations and dismiss their obligations, but women really put a lot of energy in, 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 their, in their effort, in their actions, and in their thoughts about fulfilling their obligations. Now it's interesting to me that her obligation was to pay back that creditor. Can I tell you something? She was a slave to death. She wasn't free because of that creditor. Because of what she owed. That was her obligation. But here's something I know. Can I tell you something? Many of us in this room have obligations. And sometimes we kind of think just because we have an obligation that, that we're so we're bound. But I'm going to tell you, there is an answer to our obligations. What I love about this woman is what she did. It, she had an obligation to pay him back, but what she realized this, because I wrote this down, is that she had an obligation to pay back the, cre the creditor, but she was free to create a solution. Yes. Oh, come on. See, you know, I can tell you right now, every one of us in this room has obligations, 
and that we have to do certain things. But let me just tell you, we are free to create a solution. Yes. Come on. I'm not so bound that I can't find a solution. I'm not so broke that I can't find a solution. I may not even make enough money to pay my car payment, but I'm still not bound to find a, to create a solution to meet that need. Come on. And so I believe with all my heart that there's an impartation in this room tonight that God wants to raise up women that are creative. Come on. Yeah. Women that are creative. Because that's your, that's your DNA. That's what you've been made to do. To create life. Come on. Right. And if you can birth a life, you can also birth a solution. Come on. Come on. Yes, we can. Because here's the thing. When she's in a world of hurt. Yeah. But what happens? Mm -hmm. What happens? She understands what I need to do. How am I going to create the solution? So that my sons are not taken. Right. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get a word. Ooh, I'm going to get a word. Yes, I'm going to get a word from God. Yes, Lord. And you know what? What's amazing is that is that we're out, guys. We're outnumbered tonight. <laughs> what does that tell me? That tells me there's a lot of mothers that really want to get a word from God, but they don't want to be stuck. Oh, come on. They don't want they don't want to give up what they birthed. They don't want to release what they have carried and what they bring. They don't want to lose that. They want to make sure they keep it. But rather than fall into the trap of just giving up and letting life just begin to take and steal and rob and kill. They're not going to let them do that. I'm going to the house of God and I'm going to get a word from God because in that word, because Deuteronomy says, 8, 8, 18 says, says, I give you the power to create. Everybody say, I'll give you the power to create. Now, now, here's what's interesting about because we're made in the image and likeness of God, ladies and gentlemen. We have the power to create, but we also have the power not to create. Right. I can sit around and wait for my ship goes in. I can sit around and let things happen. But I love the fact that she did not sit around, Nayan. What she did, not only did she go get a word, but she linked herself with a prophetic. Mm -hmm. yeah. She linked herself and when I don't have an answer, I need a prophetic word regarding the situation of what I need to do. Right. Because she understood the burden isn't going to get lifted by just paying a bill. The burden, the burden that's going to get lifted is in the anointing. So I'm going to go where the anointing is. I'm gonna because I gotta get this thing off my shoulders, and I need the anointing right now yes. to lift it off my shoulders. Yes. Not the anointing just to pray for people so they fall out. I need the anointing to break the yoke of death. I need to break the book of bondage that I'm in. So I'm gonna link myself up with the word. Yes. So what happens? Your servant. My husband's dead, and you know your servant feared. I mean, she basically says, you know, my husband really feared God. And then, hey, even if you fear God, you're going to have problems. Right. Come on. Right. Come on. That's the truth. And they're going to come take my two children as his slaves. Mm -hmm. So Elisha said, see, see, that's why what I see here, Melanie, is imperative. That not only do we come to get a word, right. we have a relationship with the word. Right. Yes. Because she had a relationship with the prophet, she was able to have access to him. And this is the most famous prophet of the day. I mean, everybody knows who he carries, but she can walk right in and say, walk right into where he's living and says, hey, listen, this happened. Elisha said to her, what shall I do for you? I mean, because in the thing is, he didn't tell her, well, let's negotiate with your obligation. Because sometimes I think we're trying to find a solution in our own natural reasoning. He's not, because the, the fulfilling the obligation isn't the prophet using his 
equity, relational equity, you tell the creditor you need to just let it go and not pay the debt. He didn't do that. He, because he knew that the solution was already in her house. Oh, come on. Most of our solutions to our life's problems is not outside, it's inside. But what we have to be is we have to be open because sometimes we're looking for we're looking for the lottery rather when the when the Lord lives on the inside. Come on, we're looking to win the lottery on the outside when the Lord of all creation lives on the inside. Come on, who owns the cattle on a thousand hill? Whose streets is paved with gold? I love this. He says, "What shall what shall I do for you? Tell me, tell me." What do you have in the house? Everybody say, what do you have in the house? house. Now, I don't know about you, but every time I come to the Citadel, I get blessed because there's a lot in the house. (laughs) Yes. Now, maybe there may be a handful of people tonight, but I still see there's more than what some people have in the house. Because sometimes we can look at what we don't have rather than what we do have. And when I don't, when I look at what I don't have, and who's not here, or who's supposed to be here, or who left, or who did this or that, I can get discouraged. Right. But then when that happens, I never access what's already in the house because I'm thinking about what's not in the house. Can I tell you, there's something in the house. There's something in the house that can remove the burden. There's something in the house that can remove the yoke. There's something in the house that can break every yoke. It's the anointing that's in the house. Come on. Can I tell you there's an anointing in your house? And all God wants you to do is access that anointing that's in your house. Now listen to this. Tell me what you have in your house. What? She never, Millie, she never even thought about that right. until the prophet asked her the question. Right? Because what? Sometimes. Because obviously he's gonna, he doesn't just give her a word. He begins to show her there's something in your house that you're not seeing. Right. There's something in your house Mm -hmm. that you're not aware of right Right. now. Because if you knew what was in your house, you probably wouldn't have had to come to see me. Right. But I want to ask you a question. What's in your house? Because sometimes... You know, I never knew that Bella could sing. I never knew that Nipsey could sing. It was already in the house. Yeah. Yeah. Why did I need to hire a worship leader when I I already had worship leaders in the house? I know. Are you hearing me? I never, see, because I never knew that Veronica and Catalina could, I never knew that Teresa was a great preacher. Yeah. Guess what? I found out until she was, I found it in the house. Come on. I don't need a guest speaker. I got Teresa. Come on. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know Vanessa was so talented with cards and, and, and the media, I, but it was in the house. Oh, because on. sometimes we can get blind oh, to what's yeah. in the house. Because we never asked this what's in the house. Because we're looking at something from outside of us that's going to find the solution to our problem when it's already in the house. And he says this. Tell me what you have in your house. And she said, your maidservant has nothing. <laughs> you know why she said she had nothing? Because it's been draining me. Thinking about, first of all, I just lost my husband. That's draining me. Secondly, I just got the letter in the mail. They're coming to take my kids. That's draining me. Just found out my son's in jail. Or my daughter divorced. That can drain you. It feels like it takes everything out of your house. Because sometimes there's things in life that just rip things out of our house and right. make it. Right. God, I don't have nothing left. That's why you gotta come to the house of God yes. and wake up with the word. Yes. Because yes. when you have nothing left, when you have nothing left to give, 
You can't see anything. You can't see nothing. Your best place to be is in the presence of God. And I found out when I have nothing left, I got to run to the altar. Because when I run into his presence, I discover he's put something in me that I'm not seeing at his presence. Your maid servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Now, your maid servant has nothing in the house except the anointing. We just read. Isaiah 10, 27, it shall come to pass in that day that the burden will be, be taken away from your shoulder and the yoke from your neck and the, and the yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing. Come on. Come on. And really, in some translation, it says because of fatness. And so I'm not going to let my wife tell me I'm fat anymore now. Is that what I'm saying? <laughs> but what? But actually, what that means? What that means is that it is that because the uh, because the the Assyrian uh, the, the nation of Assyria had put a yoke on the people of God, and like an like an ox would would would, would they yoke the ox? So the the ox would tread the grain and work for them. And what what the Assyrians had done is put a yoke on God's people. But what Isaiah prophesied is guess what? Your neck's going to get bigger and it's going to bust that yoke. Come on. How many want to bust the yoke? I want to bust the yoke in Tucson, Arizona. I want to bust the yoke in those that are in trouble. I want to bust the yoke. Because you know what it means? That means that you're going to, get, you're going to grow spiritually and every yoke that you used to... Used to you used to carry every yoke that used to control you. You're going to grow spiritually, and you're, that yoke is not going to fit your neck, and it's just going to pop off your neck. Yeah. Your maid servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Wow. Let's see, here's the thing. No, the husband. Her, her husband, this widow woman's husband, didn't leave a 401k, or in my case, a 403b, didn't leave a, an insurance, life insurance, or a house, or a vehicle. He left something more than material, he left oil. Oh, come on. Yes, Lord. Because we, 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 our church, we don't have to worry. Yes. We don't have to worry about who's here and who's not. Oh. We're whatever. We, we, it's going to yeah. grow. We, we know it's going to grow. Yes, we know that people are going to come. But here's something that yes. we got to remember. That our most precious commodity yes. is not people. It's the oil. It's the anointing. Come on. Because people don't break the yoke. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. Come on. People can't do anything in their own power. But when there's an anointing in the house, people come in chained, they leave free. They come in depressed, they leave with joy. They come in discouraged, they leave with clarity. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's because of the anointing. Your maid servant has nothing in the house except a jar of oil. Then he said, this is amazing, Eliana, Go borrow vessels. Now everybody say this. Go borrow. Go borrow. Go borrow. Now obviously, Elijah the prophet had not been to a financial advisor. Because <laughs> what kind of financial advisor that if you went to and you were in debt would tell you to go borrow. Because the reason you are in debt is you borrowed too much and you couldn't pay it back. Right. See, that's why Miliana was arguing with the Holy Spirit. 
Yeah. When when the, when Emmanuel Kenneth Tracy, the 89 or 90 now, 91 now, I hope to see him. But but a few years ago, arguing when when he asked her to give two thousand dollars because why? Uh, you've got a three thousand dollar hotel bill that's due in five days at the first of the month for the double tree there on Green Park, and if you and if you give your two thousand dollars away, you can't pay it. And God is saying, go borrow. <laughs> go borrow. Church, if we're not linked up, come on. Right. If we're not linked up with the word, because a lot of times I found this out, sometimes God's advice doesn't make sense. That's right. Yeah. That's right. 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 Sometimes what God asks us to do right. doesn't make sense to right. our, our natural mind. Exactly. Doesn't make sense to our human reasoning. Yeah. Doesn't make, make sense to anything we've learned right. or anything we've ever experienced in our own life. But I'm going to tell you, neither does giving two thousand dollars at a conference when you're one of the guest speakers either. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I remember this happened. I, I was up above Sacramento. This was a few years ago. It was two two. I think it was two eighteen, and. I'm sitting, the, 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 the church is going to stay like this, and then they, they have the sky on the side, they have one of the guest speakers and the pastors. Mm -hmm. And right before service, the Spanish guy, he speaks Spanish, he says, the Spanish descent, walks up to me oh, yeah. and hands me an envelope, and it's a wad of cash. Now, I, I still have this black bag. Now, I'm going to a couple minutes and I'm going to get up and speak so I don't have time to count it. So I just stick it in my bag. Don't go in my bag. Come on. <laughs> no, anyway. So I, I stick it in my bag and, and so I, I, I forget about it and I go back home. But 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 I, I never forgot. I have got this as long as I live. I go back back to the room where we're staying. And I'm in the room, and and, and Meliana asked me because she saw it too. What's in the bag? Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I remember. Uh, so I, I I I I open my bag, and sure enough, there's this big envelope with a wad of cash. And so I grab the wad. And I start counting it and counting it and counting it and counting it. And it was $10,000 in cash. Now, look, ladies and gentlemen, this is exactly what goes through my mind. Who walks around with $10,000 in cash unless he's in the cartel? Come on. You know what I'm saying? Or it's a drug dealer. Who walks around with that kind of cash? So the first thing I did is I called the pastor. I called the pastor and I said, Pastor, this gentleman, this gentleman comes up to me and, and, and he and, and he handed me an envelope and I didn't have time to count it, you know, because I was sitting there right next to you and and and, and yeah, he's, and I said, You gave me ten thousand dollars. In cash. I mean, you could have wrote a check. <laughs> Could have deposited in my ministry account in cash. And, and, and the pastor goes, Oh, John, he told me he was going to bless you. Wow. Yeah. Keep it. Yeah. I said, He's not a drug dealer. He goes, No, he's not a drug dealer. <laughs> he's, a, he's, a, he's a business owner. He owns a, he owns a business. That's oh, hey, Praise Jesus. And I gave it to Maliana. Praise yeah. Jesus. <laughs> I gave it to the mother. <laughs> but let me just tell you right now, the reason I share that story yeah. is there's something that God does that does not make sense. Right. Go borrow. Mm -hmm. but, but let me just tell you, Meliana, you know what I love about this mother? She was so desperate she didn't have time to argue. Right. Come on. Yeah. And sometimes we gotta get so desperate we don't have time to argue with God's instructions. Right. Good. Go borrow. Mm -hmm. Says, go borrow vessels. Go borrow them at large for yourself and from all your neighbors. Mm -hmm. So basically, what he's saying is, go go get some vessels from the house. 
But not only just go get go get vessels, go ask your neighbors for vessels. Yeah. Oh, One translation says empty vessels. Everybody say empty vessels. Empty vessels. Can I tell you something right now? I'm going to ask you to do something. Every time we gather, before we come on Thursday night, go find some empty vessels. Bring the empty vessels to the house. Invite empty vessels to the house. Because I don't want just full vessels, I want empty vessels. Why? Because there's anointing in the house and there's oil in the house. And what better thing to do than to, than to fill empty vessels with oil? Come on. So to break the yoke and to break what they're carrying and to, and, and to break their burdens off of their shoulders, what better way? And then he says, and, and then he says, you know, go go borrow empty vessels, but not not even empty vessel, not just get a few. In other words, don't just get a couple, get as many as you can. Yeah. You know what I love about this mother? This mother is so desperate that she does it. She doesn't care what her neighbors think. Her neighbors may think she's crazy. What do you do with borrow empty vessels? In other words, because empty vessels have no value because there's nothing in them. Because what makes them valuable is what's inside, not what's outside. Come on. So, because basically what she's going to her neighbors and asking, and her son, is I want you to ask what has no value at this time. Because guess what? We're going to get people in here that in the natural, in the world, they have no value. They're, they're, they're outcast. They're, 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 they're pushed aside. Nobody wants to be around. They, other churches can't handle them. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Guess what? They're empty vessels. But guess what? Because there's oil in the house, we're going to put value in those vessels. Oh, church, we're not giving away uh, Starbucks cars just to give away Starbucks cars. You know what? Because I got a fast Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? And I'm still not fast at Starbucks because now I'm buying Starbucks cars. I should have put stock in Starbucks. Come on. I got rid of my $300 habit. Now I'm buying cars. Come on. But why? Because it is for one reason. I want empty vegetables in the house. And I don't want to just gather a few. I want as many empty vessels in the house as possible. Because there's people. Yes, Lord. Yeah, Lord. Jesus, thank you, Lord. So notice what he says. <coughs> don't just gather a few. And you shall go in. And shut the door behind you. And you and your sons. And pour out into all these vessels. Everybody say, pour out into all these vessels. You know what she said earlier? We read, I have nothing. Right? How can I pour out when I myself have nothing? You don't know. I, I've been weeping. My husband's dead. I've been receiving letters from the creditor. Right. My house is here for My my car is being repossessed. Yeah. I can't take the bus. I have no food, and you're telling me to pour out. Oh my word! <laughs> Everything is broken down, yeah. and you're telling me to pour out. Right. How can I pour out when I have nothing? Come on. Can I tell you something right now? I have learned this. I've learned this ever since the Lord had called us to, to travel all over this planet. I have found out, guess what, ladies and gentlemen, even when I may think I have nothing. Right. Because I'm willing to pour myself out yes. on vessels yes. that are empty. That God has a way right. of replenishing and uh -huh. refueling and empowering and reviving and putting in something in me that I never knew I had. Because here's what I realized. That when she kept pouring, it kept flowing. Yeah. The moment, that, this is why I schedule my services so full 
It's not because I don't want to have time of rest. I love time of rest. But here's the bottom line. We've been, we've been born for this. We've been born for this. We've been called for this. This mother was not called to stay stuck. This mother was not called to stay in debt. She was not called to stay in the condition that she was in. And as long as she stayed where she is and did not pour out, nothing was going to change. Yes, right. Oh God, when he raised up mothers, when he raised up women in this house, then regardless of what your situation is, you'll pour out. I'm going to say pour out. We talk about outpouring. Of, an, uh, of, of God. Let me just tell you, in order for there to be an outpouring of God, somebody has to be that vessel. Somebody has to be that conduit. Somebody has to pour the oil. Come on. Somebody has to. Somebody has to do the pouring. Listen. Go borrow a vessel and you shall go in, shut the door behind you, you and your sons, which means she got her sons involved. You're not going to be taking mm -hmm. as long as you're pouring. Nobody's going to take. Yeah. Pour out all, the, on, on all these vessels, right. and you shall set aside mm -hmm. what is full. Yeah. Oh, Jesus! Right. Well, all I have is a little bit, and you're telling me to pour out my little bit. Yes, I am. Because this mother loved her sons more than the fear of not having enough. Yeah. Right? She, she loved the fact that it shall come to pass that in that day, come on, the burden shall be lifted from your shoulders. Are you hearing with her? There is a day when it comes to pass in yeah. that day. Yeah. There was a day for this woman, and there's one of the day for every woman in here, yeah. every mother in here, every man in here. Yeah. There's a day when all of a sudden everything that you pour out, come on, set aside that which is full. Now listen to what he says. Because he's actually giving her a strategy. Mm -hmm. I would just thank God that God's a wonderful strategist. Yes. Isn't he God a wonderful strategist? Yes. He, obviously, he didn't. He didn't look at the fact that, that oh, if I borrow vessels, I'm gonna. That she's gonna be in debt again. He didn't see that there was a purpose, which means she had to. She had to go knock on the door. She had to get out of herself, do something uncomfortable that she never had done before. But she loved her son more than she loved her comfortability. Right. Good. So this, she went. She went from him. Shut the door behind her and her sons. Mm -hmm. They were bringing the vessels to her. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. They were obedient sons. Mm -hmm. Thank God for mothers that have obedient sons. Mm -hmm. I love them how this line is beautiful. They were bringing the vessel to her and she poured. Mm -hmm. They just kept coming. Into the house. Yes. And she kept on. Yes, she says, Come on. Yep, we will. Yeah. That's why when we we were on, on that behind me on the screen when yeah. we do our announcements that mm -hmm. just 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 bring vessels and we'll keep pouring. Yeah, we'll, keep pouring. we'll keep pouring. Yes. That's yes. why Meliana and I will keep pouring and pouring and pouring pour. and pouring. And pouring and pouring and pouring, and I'm not going to stop. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, yeah. I'm not going to stop. Yeah. Now, who, who, I, because I'm not thinking about whether I'm going to run out of money. Right. Right. Well, if you give this money away, how are you going to pay your bills? Right. Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, can I, can I tell you something right now? I, we have already been past all that. We got over that long, long yes. time ago because you know what the Bible says? David set his affection on the house of his God. Yeah. Come on. Yes. And this woman set her affection on her sons. Yeah. On her sons. Yeah. But the only way I'm going to keep my sons yeah. is if I keep pouring. Keep pouring. Come on. The only way I'm going to keep my family intact. Yeah. And guess what? Not only am I...
going to keep my son, but I'm honoring my husband who has gone on to be with the Lord by pouring out what he gave me. Come on! Because let me just tell you, I don't have to worry about whether the economy goes this way or that way or the, the prices of gas and all these things happening economically. Yeah, I don't have to worry about whether Prop 42 is this or that. I don't have to think about that. Not that I'm not praying, not that I'm not concerned about those things, but as long as I'm pouring, as long as I'm pouring, I'm going to be fine. Yes, it is. When the vessels were full, listen this, when the vessels were full. Everybody say when the vessels were full. What is our job as a church? Fill vessels. Fill vessels. When the vessels are full, which requires work. I mean, he didn't tell them just sit around and wait for a lottery to come in. Or marry a millionaire. Right. Come on. Right. Let, me, let, me, let me prophesy a millionaire from you to get all your debt. She didn't do that. He didn't do that. Now that God can't do that. I'm certainly not putting that past God. Right. But what she did is she worked in the middle of her brokenness. Yes, she she did. worked in the middle of carrying that yoke. Yes. And, and I, 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 as she labored, guess what? The anointing broke that yoke yes. off of her neck. Yes, Lord. So this. Yes, Jesus. When the vessels were full, she said to her son, Bring me another vessel. Mm -hmm. This tells me she had still had oil. Yeah. She had as much oil yes, as many, as long as there were vessels, yeah. she had the oil to fill up the vessel. Oh, Jesus. And he said, and, they, and he said to her, There's there is not one vessel more. The, and the oil stopped. I guess guess what? Like Veronica's dream. There'll be five hundred people here one Jesus day. Name. Yes, Lord. Are you hearing me? Yes, Jesus. Now, as long as we keep pouring, right, and, right. Keep pouring right. and keep pouring, right. and keep pouring, and keep pouring, yes. and keep pouring, and keep pouring, guess what God will do? Yes. God will fill every yes. single yes. vessel. Yes. So that means I want to keep bringing empty vessels yes. and bringing empty vessels. Thank yes. God for a mother that pour. Yes. My mom, I thank God for my mom who is yes. going to be 81 pretty soon. Yes. And then she still has her right mind. And, and, and I and, and you know what? I love my mom and she's the greatest mom in the world. She's been a, a great mom. And guess what? And and but, but what I guess what I, I had the privilege of leading my own mother to the Lord. Come on. I had the privilege of leading my own mom to the Lord. And then, and then when I go to my hometown where I grew up. She is so instrumental in bringing her friend to have me prophesy over her friend. And what, a few years ago, she called me and said, I know you're going to be in town, John. I, I have a, I, I, they had a name for it, but they were all seniors. And she said, John, I want you to come over to the coffee shop. And can you prophesy all over my senior friends? I said, okay, Mom, I'm going to do that. Uh, and I'll do that. And I can tell you right now why. And I look back on that. My whole family got changed. Come on. I thank God for that. And then what they said, and the oil stopped. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil and pay the man. And you and your sons can live on the rest. How much oil does she have? I know, I know. That she can actually pay the debt yeah. and live the rest of her life. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Not just think about how much you make it, yeah. the cost of living that takes you to live the life that you're living right now. To pay your house, to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage, to pay your bills, 
pay the car payment or, 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 or whatever it is. And guess what? She pays that off and then has the money left over to live for her and her two sons, a household of three, for the rest of her life. Oh, come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That's multiplication. That's a woman that understands it's the anointing that breaks the yoke. That's the woman whose burden was lifted off of her shoulders. How many want that kind of blessing? Come on. How many want that kind of blessing? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Now, I know it's not in the text, but I believe this with all my heart. Because it's a principle as I wrap this up. It's a spiritual principle. Because, no, Anna, when I borrow, I have to return. Otherwise, you're a stealer, a thief. Right. She paid the debt. Mm -hmm. So what did she do with all those empty vessels? She sold the oil. See, I, 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 I understand about the principle from God without God. Mm -hmm. So now her son's got to go back to the neighbors and give them back their vessels because yeah. they borrowed them. I believe with all my heart. I believe that when they took back those vessels to the neighbors, we don't know how many, but it was a lot. Mm -hmm. and how much? I don't know how much oil was going for it down there. Five bucks, I don't know. It was probably a lot, but it was enough oil. And how many hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about. What I, what I would need to pay my bills right now for the rest of my life. And if I, if I lived 20 years, and I do the math, I need at least $5 million off the top of my head. It means that's a lot of oil. But listen to this, and I believe with all my heart. When she returned those vessels, she didn't return them empty. She returned them full. Because the reality, as I close, the reality is the vessels belong to God anyway. Mm -hmm. They're God's vessels. Yes. You're God's vessel. Yes. We're not God's vessel. The vessels belong to God. Mm -hmm. We don't own the vessels. Mm -hmm. And so what God does, though, is God sends us empty vessels. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. He sends us empty vessels. Right. And He gives us the oil. He gives us the gift. He gives us a song. He gives us the ability to media or the ability to make make, make, make cars and make uh, an ability to think about when he gives the mother's roses. He gives us creativity. He does that. He gives us the power to create. He does that. And then guess what? I, and then, but here's what I want to do. When I when I stand before the Lord, I want to say, God, you gave me this empty vessel, and I want to return them full to you. Come on. And you know what God's going to say? Oh, John, you can borrow my people anytime. You don't abuse them. You don't hurt them. You don't gossip about them. You don't hate them. You love them. You value them when they were empty. And you value them when they were full, too. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to keep giving you vessel after vessel after vessel after vessel. Because I know what you will do. You will pour into them and then give them back to me full. Come on. And, and you know what? I believe those neighbors, when they when they came, they weren't expecting uh, the fact that guess what? We're just going to get back and no, 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 no. With God, you get more than oh, come on. He's a debtor to no man. Give and it shall be given. Press down and shake together and running over. Men will pour into your bosom. How to believe that God wants to use you to fill vessels? Lift your hand toward heaven all over the house. Father, we love you. Yes, Lord. Father, we adore you. Yes, Jesus. We thank you for your word. Yes. It's a lamp unto our feet. Yes. And it's a light upon our path tonight. Yes. And I thank you for what you're doing right now within the sound of my yes, voice. Yes, Jesus. And I ask you, thank you Lord. even tonight, yes, Jesus. Lord Jesus, you don't tell us you don't dismiss our obligations as we've learned in this text. But 
what you do give us is you give us the anointing mm -hmm. to create a solution yes, to fulfill our obligations. Yes, Lord. When we link up with your word, yes, link up with the spirit of prophecy, yeah. link up with your vision, link up with what doesn't even make sense in our natural reasoning, God, we see Praise what you do. So God, we thank you for this mother. We thank you for this mother. That this mother became a lesson to all of us. That Father, when she did not know what to do, when she was at the end of her rope, she didn't commit suicide. She didn't quit. She didn't turn to alcohol or drugs. She didn't turn on the TV and drown out her sorrows. She went to you. Yes, Jesus. She went to the Word. Yes, Lord. And she found a solution in your Word. Yes. And she obeyed exactly yes, what you Lord. told her in detail Father, without yeah. deviating one bit from the path yes. you set her. And Lord Jesus, you did a miracle for her. Yes, Lord. I want every mother to stand right now. I want every mother to stand right now. I want every mother to stand right now. I want you to lift your hands, heaven. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lift your hands, heaven. Hallelujah. I want to pray, pray for you Jesus. right now. I want pray to pray for these mothers right now. Yes, Lord. Father, I pray that was, yes. what it was on this woman, whether that, that ability yes, to, to, to not forsake her obligations and quit on her obligations and even quit on her son. She didn't quit on her shoulders. She could, have, she could have took in the posture of becoming a victim, but did not take the posture, the posture of a victim. She became a victor. Lord Jesus, it's so easy in our culture because it seems like we can be a victim and we can survive. In those days, if you were a victim, you could not survive. You had to find a solution. Lord, Lord Jesus, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that these mothers that are standing, obviously they've had things. Every one of these women have had things happen to them. They've all had things happen to them that are tragic or traumatizing or, or evil or wrong or seem like, God, where are you? Every one of them. Because it's part of this human existence, God. But Lord, just because what is bad happens to us doesn't mean that it has to stay bad. That there is something called the turnaround. And not because of us, yes. but because of the anointing yes. that breaks every yoke, yes. that breaks, lifts the burden yes. off our shoulders. Yes. And if you're in this room right now, if you're in this room right now, if you're in this room right now, in the house of the Lord this evening, hands lifted. Hearts engaged to what is being spoken right now by the Holy Spirit. If you're in this room right now and you're standing up and you say, Preacher, I'm carrying weight on my shoulders. Could be a relationship. Could be a son. Could be a daughter. It could be economic. It could be emotional. It could be another thing. But I know this. Because Jesus says, take my yoke. For my burden of light and my yoke is easy. The solution isn't trying to figure out what to do. The solution is finding the word. Finding a word that will remove it. It's the anointing. You might be in this room and you might say, Preacher, this yoke, this yoke is carrying it. It's, it's, it's causing me to slave. Maybe, like that woman, you hit me in bed over your head. I tell you, Meliana and I, I'm not ashamed to stand here. Say that Meliana and I have been in bed over our head. We found the anointing. We found the anointing, not in, not in my, not in my talents. We found the anointing that can break the yoke. 
And if you're in this room right now, I'm going to ask you, bow your head, close your eyes. And you say, Preacher, Preacher, I need that yoke to move. I want that burden lifted. I don't want to walk out here carry it. I want to link myself up with the word right now. Dead bowed people praying, if that is you, whatever it might be, I don't ever want you to feel embarrassed. I love the fact that Meliana, that woman, was not ashamed to say she was in the situation. Sometimes the sometimes the key to transformation to lifting that burden is just admit that I got one. She admitted I got this problem. I don't know what to do. Problem is that we think it's just gonna go away. Her problem wasn't just gonna go away. She had to get a word from the problem. But if you're in that situation, whatever, whatever burden you're carrying, whatever yoke you're wearing, God wants to lift it and God wants to break it right now. By the anointing. And if that's you, and you're standing here in this room, man or woman, here's what I want you to do. On the count of three, I want you to run to this altar. One, two, three. Come right now. Come right now. I want to lift it off me. I want to lift it off of me right now. I want to lift it off of me. I want to lift it off. I want the weight lifted off of my shoulders. I want the weight. church and here in Tucson June 1st be two years there's been moments there's been moments in these two years when man I don't know should we keep going but I, I go to God and he gives me a word and I get stirred on the inside and I just say God I'm going to keep pouring yes. I'm going to keep pouring pouring. I'm pouring yes oh God Come closer yes, all the way up to the edge. Yes, oh God. Father, all thank you, Jesus, for empowering us to be All the way to the edge. We will be pouring on I can tell you. Yes, oh God. Sometimes. Yes, Jesus. Yes. Sometimes the burden isn't financial, it's relational. Because I got a son, I got a daughter. Yes. Who's completely. I just spoke to a leader just a few days ago. Great man of God. He's got four children. His, his two daughters serving the Lord faithfully. But one of his sons is lost in theology and just really is twisting his mind, angry at everybody that doesn't believe in him, what he believes. The other the other side is what they call non-binaries. A girl one day, a boy the next, a cat the next. They grew up in the house of the world. Homeschooled, godly family. I go, God, remove the yoke off of their heads. Remove the burden off of their shoulders. Oh, come on, just cry out, God, God. There's an anointing in this room right now. There's an anointing in this room right now to remove yokes and to remove the burden and break the yokes. Yes, oh God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I can tell you, I can tell you right now. There isn't a week that goes by that we don't hear about a man of God, a woman of God who served faithfully. Oh, it's, it's part of life. But 
there's an anointing in this house. And if you'll just lift your hands right where you're at, the power of God's going to come on you right now. Yes, Lord. Father, I, I lift these up before your throne. And I decree and declare, God, as hands are laid on your sons and your daughters right now, I pray that the anointing would come upon them. Would come upon them. Not the anointing just to survive, but the anointing to find a solution. Did not the anointing that, that removes my obligation, but anointing that creates creates something out of nothing that helps me to fulfill my obligation Hallelujah. and provide for me. Yes, Lord. Father, as I lay hands on this woman, yes. I decree. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She could have been anywhere. She could have been yes. home. She could have been to dinner. She could have been another. But she took time out of her business schedule to come to the house of the Lord. Yes, Not just Lord. because she was invited. Yes, Lord. But because you were to mm -hmm. The weight that she was carrying. Not because she was irresponsible, because that mother was responsible for her son. That's why she put herself out. And I hear the voice of the Lord saying this to you.
they will feel like, wow, what's the use? What's the use of trying? We're going to try it so many times. I'm so many times. I'm trying so many times. I'm so thankful that that woman didn't tell the prophet. Oh, I tried that, Elisha. I tried that. So thank you, it didn't work. She was so desperate. I keep her sure.
Father, from the top of her head, give her soul. Touch your daughter in the name of Jesus. Never to be the shame again. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to your name, Jesus. Veronica, come over here. Lay your hand on my sister Sarah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to pray for her. Yes, oh God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, oh God. Thank you, Father. Just thank you for the Yes, Lord. For the calling that you have on her life, Lord God. Yes. For all of the difference that she's making in all of these people's lives, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, that, Lord, as she's going deep, Lord God, as she's going healing deep, Lord God. I just thank you, Father God, that, Lord, that you you give her the strength to sustain her, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that even now, Lord God, that anything that is, is, is heavy burdened for her, Father God, that you will, even tonight, Father God, that it will be just, that you that it would be light, Father God, that it, that it will just come off her shoulders even tonight, Father. Now, Father God, we just thank you, Father God, that you are in control, Father God. And Lord God, that, that you would move, Lord God, that you would make a way, Father God, that you would heal, Lord God, that you would deliver, that you would set free, Father God. I just thank you, Lord God. Now, Father God, that she hasn't even begun to see, Father God, what you have in store for her and her ministry, Father God. I thank you, Lord God, that you are taking her deeper, Lord God, that that river of living waters, Father God, is it's coming strong, Lord God, and stronger, Lord. That your anointing, Father God, that anointing that destroys the yoke of bondage, Father God, that is increasing in her life, Lord God. Father God, I just thank you that even now, Father God, for your peace that surpasses all that are standing to be upon her, Lord God. Now, Father God, that no matter what's happening, Lord God, that she will not be moved, Lord. That she will stand strong, Father God. That she will not waver, Lord God. That she will hold on Father God, because she will see the salvation of the Lord. I just thank you that even now, Lord God, for that breakthroughs that are coming, Lord God, I thank you, Father God, that even as she's taking care of your business, Lord, that you're taking care of her business, Lord God, and everything, Father God, that that surrounds her, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for what you're doing, Lord God. I thank you that you're giving her the strength that she needs, Lord God, to continue moving forward, Father God. And Father God, I just ask that you would just touch her from the top of her head to the soles of her feet, Lord God, that every organ and every tissue of her body functions in the perfection of what you created to function, Father. Father God, I even pray that even now, Lord God, that you would strengthen her bones, Lord God, her legs, Lord God, that you would give her the energy that she needs to keep going, Father God. Father God, that even as she sleeps, Lord God, that she will not worry, Lord God, but that her sleep will be sweet, Lord God. That, Father God, that you regenerate her, Lord God, even as she sleeps. That when she wakes up, that she wakes up strengthened and energized, ready for the day, Father God. Ready for what you have in store for her, Lord God. I just thank you for her even now, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that she does not lack nothing, Lord God. For no good thing will you withhold from her, Lord God, and her ministry, and her husband, Lord God. I just ask for increase, Lord God, in every area of their lives, Lord God. That they will have an abundance, Lord God, to overfilling, overflowing. Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, I just thank you for what you're doing in their lives, Lord God, for where you're taking them, Lord God. I thank you that they're going from glory to glory to glory, Lord God. I thank you that they will see, Father God, your salvation in front of their eyes, Lord God. Father God, I just praise you for what they're doing in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, I lift up the Thank you that she is on the bed. She's a great man. I thank you that this will be a year when her children are exposed to the Holy. Terry, I think it was the last week or the week before, I can't remember, when I spoke about. Isaiah was caught up in something that was in the throne room of God and heard the seraphims cry out, Lord, 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 Lord,
changed him. It changed him. Because he was exposed to that kind of presence, that kind of influence. I'm going to say this. A wave of holiness is going to come off your children. They're going to say in that moment, I saw. Because what had happened was Dr. Morocco's wife, Colleen, called in last minute and says, I'm coming to do a women's conference, and you can't tell your senior pastor not to have a women's conference. So she won't be with him, but um, he's going to be well taken care of. I know you'll take care of him. I want you to, I want you to take care of him really good so he'll want to come back again. Because he's been a blessing to me known him for several years when he was on staff at a very large church in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, there in southeastern Missouri, by the Mississippi River. And you'll you'll be blessed. He's going to be here next Thursday and Friday. If you're a leader, we're having a dinner, we have breakfast, breakfast at Golden Corral. Is that correct? On what street? Okay, so I don't walk on that yeah, And he'll be there at what time we're doing that? Nine. Nine o'clock. He told me he wants to pour into the leaders. Yes. He yes. had told me that on the phone. Yes. I said he doesn't fly out till, till Saturday evening. We're going to stay in at my house, so we'll make sure he's all taken care of. But let's lift our hands and just thank yes. the Lord for what he's done tonight. Yes. God, I thank you. Father, I. Father, I, I see anointed vessels here. That even the rest of this week and on Sunday night when we come back for Bible study for the men's and for the women's and for the children. Thank you for Kathleen and Louie and what they're doing with our children. Father, I ask you, God, that you send people from the north, south, east, and the west. You, you just bring as many empty vessels that can fit in this building so that we can You'll see their lives change so we can give them back to you. And you'll say, well, you'll say, it's the Citadel Church, I'll send you people because of how you value them and bless them. Yeah. I can trust you. I can trust you with my vessels. Lord, let it be said of us that whomever you send us, we, 
you would you would trust in us with them. In the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Give God a shout of praise. Are you glad to come to church? Oh, oh, they never finished straight. Oh, why don't you guys come up here? Come up real here. Quickly. Real quickly. Real quickly. Oh, 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 I was so yeah. caught up in the message. Yeah. Yeah. We got real quickly. Come up and share yeah. a little bit. These are my good friends, Hi. Jerry and Brian. They came all the way over from Santa Maria, California. That's what yeah. I'm Santa Maria, California. They've been here, I think you guys were here last year or sometime. Oh, I um, heard them. But tell them, tell them a little bit about the ministry because they go back and forth to Hawaii and other places. I'm actually going to where yeah. they're going away. Yeah. On Saturday. Powerful ministry. Well, thank you. Thank you. We, we do Restoring the Foundations, yeah. which is an inner healing model yeah. and four <coughs> integrated areas, which are sins of the fathers, resulting yeah. curses, like family baggage. Does anyone have family baggage? No? Just me? Okay, we all got it. Okay. Family baggage. The second area is uh, 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 ungodly beliefs any way that we are operating out of something that is not godly. Okay, we're operating out of that. The third area is a soul, spirit, hurt, somewhere where we've been injured in our life. Yeah. And what happens is the enemy uses, everybody knows we're in battle, right? Well, the enemy uses those three areas to come and bring torment right. or inflict us or make us uh, continue to get hurt or, or hurt others. So anyways, what we do is we eliminate that right because of what Christ has done for us on the cross, right? Through the blood of Jesus, we, we, we close those doors, and then we just kick out the, the evictors, which are demonic oppression. Go ahead. And I just want to give a fun couple of fun testimonies. We just took a couple through a couple weeks, well, about a month ago, I guess, and uh, his allergies are gone. Hey! And this is a super flu year, right? They're right. just saying that it's so bad. In California, anyway, and so yeah, his allergies are gone. God healed that through that being healed of wow. all those things from from all that ministry. Oh so, my goodness, that was fun. Think about so, that, right? So we've seen all kinds of whether it be your physical ailments, emotional ailments, you know, uh, spiritual difficulties. All of those can be eliminated through that process. So we, it's really exciting because we get to see a different dimension of God. Amen. And then your pastor gave us a word that we would be going to UK this year to do what we do. <laughs> and about a week after that, we met a couple from UK that we trained to be ministers, and they said, "Come and train our people." So we just go to UK and train fifteen new ministers. It looks like. Oh. And this is all because we said yes to the Lord. Come on. Okay, this is not something that we tried to organize. That we tried to open the doors. This is something when you say yes to God, when he has called you, because he called us, we were sitting in church, just like you guys, and this guy was says, hey, will you help us? And we both, like, we, I turned to my wife and I said, did you feel that? <laughs> because I felt God's finger on my heart. Yeah. So we knew they were called, we just did what would the next designated step in front of us. And now God sends us out all over the place. It's amazing. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. God's good. We were in Hawaii yeah. four times last year. We had yeah. no idea at the beginning right. that we were going to do that. And we were helping missionaries that were going out into the world to bring disciples to Christ. So it's, it's a, what's a, what a joy. So we were driving here last year, yeah. and we didn't even know we were going to Hawaii, but we got a phone call and said, can you come? And we prayed about it, and like two weeks later, we were there oh, training. Now, do you guys have to be part of the some information that you should? Mm -hmm. Yep. I can sure. give eye parts. If you guys are interested, we can, you know, because I know that it's a powerful ministry. Would you say we will deliver? Yeah. For everybody? Yeah. Okay. No. If you want to give them some, if you sure. guys want to. Yes. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Praise Jesus. If you guys want to, you guys come to have some uh, information, what they to give away. Because that is God's desire for all of us. To walk freely. Amen. Amen. Deliver it. Freedom. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Wonderful. So we'll see you all again next Thursday. Amen. Don't forget, bring your friend, family. And we're going to have a powerful time next week.